the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hello. Hey, I want to be able to uh, call to action those of us that profess that Jesus Christ is our personal Lord and Savior. Those of us who say that we are Christians. Because I think it's time for us to be reminded of who we are and who we're supposed to obey. See, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to you because I believe that with all the types of division and the the, the, the shooting, the rioting, the protests uh, with violence and destruction, the things ranging from police brutality to political division within our country, that I think it's time for us to send out reminders and, and make sure to remind those who preach the gospel and to the church, and you got to remember, the church is not the building, but us, those who profess and those that receive Jesus Christ as first of all and the Savior, that we're supposed to obey Jesus above all other things, above all the different ideologies, above all the different things that we hold as some type of uh, political uh, point of view, to include even the fact that we've got people that that are for abortion and there's people that are for, uh, not for abortion. And there's people because of the, the divide that somewhere in the translation admit that I hold this position so dear that I will violate, violate the laws of God. Think about it. Whether you for abortion or against abortion, the question is, does that negate your or the commandment that God gave you and me? And, I, and, I, and I'll show it to you here. As, as, if you are a Christian, see, I want to make sure you understand this is not a uh, suggestion or a good thought or a good point of view. It's, it's what, the God, what the Bible says. For, you know, I think it's better to say what is written. You see here, I put in John 13, 31 to 35. And you see the subtitle there, it says, A New Commandment. Now, it's important for you to understand that you are and have been given a new commandment. And I, and, and technically, it's, it's, to me, it's almost saying it really hasn't changed from the old commandment. But it, it is what Christ said, and we go by what he said, written, a new commandment. It says in John 13, 31, Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified. And God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself. And shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You shall seek me. And as I said unto the Jews, whether I go, you cannot come. So now I say unto you, John 13, 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. I am calling the body of Christ to remind them that you have a new commandment to love one another. See, that cuts across your political perspective, political views. That cuts across those who have racial bias. And I'm talking about whether you're black and have a racial bias or whether you're white and have a racial bias or whether you're some other different type of ethnic groups and, and have a bias or a negative bias toward other people. If, if you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, if that is what you have decided to do, then that means that you are to obey his commandments. 
and, and his commandment is for all of us to love one another. You know, it, it, it's just not negotiable to sit there and say, well, I hate this person for what they did. I hate this person because of the color of their skin. I hate these group of people because of the color of their skin. I hate these people what they did. And, and, and see, you can try to justify things in the flesh all you want, but the reality is if you are a Christian, see, now if you don't want to be a Christian, if you don't want to be called a Christian, but you want to be called a Republican, or you want to be called a Democrat, or you want to be called a, uh, what you call a patriot, or you want to be called uh, <laughs> whatever you else want to be called, then this doesn't apply to you. I hope it would apply to you. But for those of us who have, we confess with their mouth, you remember Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus. I believe in your heart that God so that God uh, raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And you confess that and you believe that in your heart. For the heart one man leads unto righteousness, the mouth confession made the salvation. And you know, I'll, I'll be glad to bring it up to you if you want, because you if you made the choice to be a Christian. And that's who I'm talking to. This message is for believers and then for non-believers <laughs> to, to realize that when you see us, you're supposed to see what he called us to be. We're supposed to be, as far as I'm concerned, followers of Christ. You know, and, and the one I wanted to share that, make sure that those who see this, uh, the scripture I'm reading in Romans 10, verse 9, in verse 10. And it says here, and I'll make sure you can see it clearly on the screen. It says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, meaning he's Lord, not a political party, not people, not your pastor, but if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in the heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, man believes in righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made into salvation. It's believing in our heart and making that choice in our heart to let Jesus Christ be Lord. And that's very important for us to understand. Who is your Lord? Who is your Savior? Uh, it's, it's critical for us to remember that. And the fact is, as a Christian, you're supposed to, we're supposed to love one another. And, and you know, that is how people recognize who we are. And any time we sit there and, and allow divisions based on ideology, based on uh, race or, or, or even nationality, we're not professing, we're not allowing and obeying Christ. And, and, and if you don't want to obey Christ, then that's, that is your choice. Because he's not going to make you do anything. All I'm going to tell you what is written. Because I know when our flesh and other people come in, and the enemy loves to come in, you know, Satan loves to come to steal, kill, and destroy. But see, Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly. And see, abundant life doesn't mean to abuse uh, your fellow man. It does not mean to, to abuse even... <laughs> even animals, right? Not to abuse and and, 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 and and just be rude toward things in life. It, it means to, to learn to live with one another, respect one another, love one another, because he told us to. I read that, and you read that in the scripture. And some of you, I know, and, and, and some of your teaching, and some of the, some of the things of even teaching of hate, we, people brought in the concept that, well, it doesn't apply to everybody. Well, that's not what God said, because he said that we're supposed to love one another. And, and he's talking about those who will be his disciples. And you are a disciple of Christ. And you know whether you, you can deny it or not, but if you know that everybody, whether they're black, red, yellow, whatever, 
they're confessing Jesus the Lord, then they also are disciples. And as disciples, we are to love them. And that's what I really want to get down to, is that learning and understanding to love one another. And, 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 and to become more neighborly toward your fellow man. Why is that your fellow man? Because your fellow man is your neighbor. You know, I, I, one of the scriptures we recently studied, and I want to put that in there because I'm, I'm coming back. I'm coming back to, to this as a reminder um, over, I think it should be the faith comes back here and here and here and again. And I'm asking the body of Christ. I'm asking you to remind all of us that we're supposed to love one another. We're supposed to do and follow God, not follow man, not follow ideology. Okay, you see, you're talking about, you, you see in the political division where people want to sit there and say, well, he's a Democrat, so hate him. <laughs> he's a Republican, yeah, so hate him. Uh, he's not on my side. He's not taking my position, so I can hate him. I can give him what he deserves or what you think he deserves. But in reality, that's not obeying Christ. We're supposed to love one another. And that was even in the Old Testament, we're supposed to love one another. You know, I put this, I, I brought this up and I want to let you see it. So, so I won't hold you up too long. But I want you to remember this. And then we, like I said, I, I think I want to bring out a series of call to reminder. And I'm calling all the ministries out there, whether you are a mega ministry or you are a small ministry. Preach the gospel. Stay on message. The message is to love God and love your neighbor. It is written for us to do that. And when in time we, you know, the devil came in and told Adam and Eve that they could eat from that fruit of the tree. They, they, when God told them that if you eat from this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. And the devil came in and said the opposite of what God said. And they took and ate that fruit because they listened to another source. I'm reminding you what the word said as Christians. Let's learn to love one another. You know, this, and, and then here, even with the, the Old uh, Testament, this is from the New Testament reading, but the quote is going to come from asking what is the law? It says here, this is the parable of the Good Samaritan. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what should I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, what is written in the law? How readest thou? He answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. That was written even from the beginning in, in, the, in the commandment that God gave mankind. And like I said, we just read where Jesus said, I give you a new commandment to love one another. In verse 28, uh, and Jesus answered and said to him, Thou hast answered right. Do this and thou shalt live. And remember, the question was how to inherit eternal life. So if you're not in Christ, you inherit eternal life by going by the law. If you're in Christ, you inherit eternal life by going and believing and accepting Jesus Christ. But it still points right back to the fact of loving thy neighbor. Huh? And then in verse 29, then the lawyer, he's willing to justify himself and said unto Jesus, who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering and said, a certain man went down to, from Jericho, from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leave him half dead. And by chance there came unto a certain priest, that's that somebody that's serving in the temple, that way, when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. He, despite the fact this man was in need, this, this man half dead and stripped of all his raiment and clothes and whatever he owned, and the man passed by the other side. And likewise, in verse, in verse 32, and likewise, the Levite, those are from his serving God in the temple. When he was at the place, came and looked on him, he even took time to look on him and passed by the other side. 
But a certain Samaritan, this is something, and it's interesting, he put that in there because in, in, in the those days when Jesus was walking uh, this earth, Samaritans had nothing to do, and the Jews had nothing to do with Samaritans. So he wanted to show, he told you that, so that just in case you get uh, a, a opinion that this only applies to certain groups of people, Jesus took the Jews and then took the Samaritans and put them to the story. And then the, here we got a certain Samaritan as he journeyed, came where he was, and we saw him. He had what compassion, which is another aspect of love, on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an end and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Now, which, Jesus said in verse 13, Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among thieves? And he said, He that shows mercy, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, Go and do likewise. I thought that was very important because all I want you to understand is we call into remembrance of Christians is that we're supposed to love one another. And I think it's time, and I feel that I'm just glad to do that, is to remind you, we gotta learn to get to live with one another and stop being divisive and putting one another down. So I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, as, as long as I'm led to do it, I'm gonna do it. And the fact is, is we need to learn to love our neighbor. We need to learn to love one another. People will recognize us as Christians if we learn to love one another. And that is not negotiable according to the word of God. So it is written, he told us, a new command I give to love one another. So let's look at that. Let's work on that. Let's remind ourselves. Let's love one another. It, it, we, we'll leave for the people that's concerned about uh, uh, bringing up the past and, and exposing the abuses and stuff as far as slavery and all that stuff. Listen, it happened. And we, I, forgive those who did what they did in the past, as well as those who create atrocities now. Because I am not going to hell for to, by hating somebody just because I don't like their lifestyle, just because I don't like their past, just because I don't like, I mean, if I don't like the, what they're wearing, no, it doesn't matter what color of skin they are. Our job as Christians, and that's who I'm talking to, we need to love one another and to love our neighbors, because that's what God put us in, told us to do. And, you know, I remember one sign that they say, which part of the commandment you didn't understand? Well, I ask you that too. Which part of the commandment you don't understand? And you can make it find somebody that agree with you, to agree with your flesh, but you're in spirit and you are a child of God. And if you want to be a child of God and let Jesus be Lord and not people and not yourself, then you'll learn to love one another. I'm gonna remind you. That's all, I can use the platforms for good, and do the things of God, or do it for the things of the world with hate and all the division, everything else goes with it. Hearing and trying to get things that you want to hear. But the bottom line is, we need to learn to love one another. And even when we talk about this vaccination and everything else, if, you, if you're not gonna take a vaccination, put keep a mask on to show that you love your fellow neighbor, amen? All right, I hope you enjoy this. I mean, it wasn't long. But it's a reminder, and it is, and I want to try to keep doing as much as I can, as long as I'm led to do so. It's to remind you, I'm calling for the church to obey what is written, the new commandment of Christ. It is written to go love one another so that they can know, the world will know that we are disciples, huh? And then what God is saying, if you're not under Christ, is that 
even God's commandment is to love thy neighbor. So we need to love God and love our neighbor. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. And with all that heart, and then with your neighbor. Love thy neighbor as thyself. If we can do that, if we, we as the body of Christ can do that, watch what will happen in our nation, in our homes, and in this world. As we call to action, Christians, love one another. Amen. Okay, I catch you next time. I'll call this segment one, and we'll just keep on going. Amen. Check it later. God bless you. Bye bye.